Hi everyone, welcome to our session. Uh, let's first do a quick intro introduction of ourselves. My name is Bing Zhuo. I'm now a final year PhD candidate at UIUC. I'm actually going to do my defense next week, so good luck with me. Uh, so uh, my, my mainly work on, uh, I mainly work on uh, like enhancing the reliability of modern cloud from uh, automatic reasonings, including verification, synthesis, software analysis. I'm now open to work. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. I'm also a um, second year PhD student from U of I. Um, my main area is um, distributed system performance optimization and system for machine learning. I'm also looking for a summer internship for the next summer. Okay, so let's get started. So today we're gonna to talk to you about like how not to lose your sleep by having a verified Kubernetes clusters using our two Kiwi. So this is a collaboration with uh, Ryan Beckett and Brett and Godfrey. So as you may know, like Kubernetes consists of these dynamic controllers, including like scheduler trying to place pod onto node according to some strategies, HPA trying to uh, you know, uh, uh, automatically skew up and down of, of the pod according to like CPU usage, for example. All those controllers making this closed loop dynamic decisions. They are collecting the metrics from the underlying API servers and then deploy their controls by updating the objects. So how could things go wrong? We studied hundreds of different failure reports collected by the community and also GitHub issues. Really appreciate you know, those uh, collections. And we, in, in general, like in, there are many different categories for, for failures, like DNS issues, Linux kernel, configuration syntax problem, credential issues. However, we identify a failure pattern that hasn't been well discussed sufficiently before which is caused by the non-trivial interactions between controller configurations or between controller and events. Events here, rep uh, like including environmental events like node failures or operational events like maintenance. This is really because those controller does not have global coordinations. Each control component has its own goals. However, they're sharing these dependencies and they possibly controlled by different team, for example, like the infrastructure team or application develop team, they may not have uh, the same objective. So this picture illustrates how this non-trivial interactions could be. Like on the left-hand side showing a subset of a controller and they're interacting with each other and also with the events on the right-hand side by manipulating the system seat in the middle. Uh, you don't need to have a look into all the detail. This is really showing you how complex this could be. Uh, next, I'm gonna show you like three concrete examples about like how failure can happen. The first is uh, a cost caused by a conflicting configuration for a single controller. Uh, we modified from official Kubernetes documentation. So in this example, there are three nodes. Each node inc includes two labels, the host name and the zone. Zone here may be your availability zones. And there are three controllers. The deployment controller trying to deploy five pods, and the scheduler has two plug, uh, has like two constraints, the topology spread plugin. Who here has used topology spread plugin before? Okay. Uh, who has encountered problem with this? Yeah, not too much, but yeah, we hope to be more, but anyway. So this topology spread pl uh, plugin is trying to like evenly uh, balance the pod across different node group. So the, there are two constraints here. Like the first is trying to balance the pod across zooms. The second is trying to balance the pod across host names. Uh, so there's also HPA trying to look into average CPU usage and with maximum replica equal to six. So things are good for the five replicas. As you can see from the picture, they can play, be placed in this, uh, as this uh, showing the picture, and they are, all the constraints are satisfied. However, there may be a CPU uh, event that the CPU in, every CPU may be increased and maybe due to more traffic, the HPA may add one more power to the system. At this point, you probably already noticed that there are conflict between like these two uh, constraints. Uh, so that's, that result in this pod cannot be scheduled onto the host name too, because now right now, the evaluating the zoom level policies, right now the max skewer is like four minus two, which is two. It can also not be placed onto host name three because right now the max skewer is three minus one, which is two right now. So, uh, so that's saying that this pod cannot really be scheduled at all in uh, with like with uh, this six pod settings. So this intent is like is violated, and operator really need to modify the conflict constraints or change the node, node topologies. This, uh, we are, by the way, we're gonna show you a demo in about five minutes about how show you how we uh, verify for this example. Uh, next, next look example is caused by a, uh, interactions between the controllers, and we collect this issue from GitHub. 
So still the same topologies, uh, and the, the, con the deployment is trying to have six paths, and the, still the same configuration for uh, the scheduler, and they, they are configured with one more uh, plugin, which is node affinity, that trying to prefer the zone two over zone one with a higher weight. Still, these uh, constraints are conflict, and it's even conflict between the plugins, like the node affinity is trying to prefer some, some node while the topology spread is trying to evenly balance the pod. So, but since the operator may learn the license and they decide that to solve, set it as a soft constraint, so they can still be successfully scheduled as shown in this picture. And note here that the, the host name level policy is, is actually not satisfied. Now the skewer is three minus one, which is two. But it's still okay until you uh, configure this scheduler, where it's trying to remove the pods that are violating the topology spread constraint. So what will happen is that the pod will be evicted and will be rescheduled by the scheduler to the same place and will be evicted again, so on and so forth, so that you will see oscillations that the pod in an ending circle of scheduling and evictions. Uh, this is really caused by a disk scheduler bug we found where the disk scheduler is not really looking to the all constraint together, but instead is looking to the one constraint like one by one to make decisions. And also the disk scheduler in this case shouldn't really evict the pod according to soft constraints. So the last example that we have is uh, about caused by interactions between controllers and events. So in this case, three, still straight, uh, straight node, and the, the, the deployment has straight paths. And it is simple, uh, the scheduler is simple, just trying to evenly uh, balance the path across nodes. And there, uh, it can be just scheduled as shown in the picture. Uh, there is a maintenance team that trying to take down one node at a time and then update it and put it back. So they think they can do this safely because your intent is more or equal to two. Right now we have straight path. That saying is safe that you can just put down one node. Uh, so, but the problem really can happen in the following order. So the maintenance will take down the first node and this pod will be evicted, will be rescheduled to another node. And then even after the, the, the node go back, this pod won't be rescheduled because scheduler doesn't do this job. So then we, when you move down to the next node, both of the pod is evicted and uh, this intent is violated. So uh, this, in this case, a descheduler is really needed to rebalance the pod after the node come back. So as from the example, we really can see that the, it's really caused by these non-trivial interactions, and also like there is sometimes caused by the non-deterministic events, or like you know for certain topologies, it's really hard for to like you know to manually reasoning all those things, uh, like you know uh, also cr across teams. I also want to briefly mention that even correctly using a single controller is actually hard. Uh, this, this shows a scheduler framework where it contains 12 different pipeline stages, 21 default plugin. And even for this uh, one single uh, plugin, it actually contains eight, uh, eight different parameters for each constraint. And there are many details, however, they are not documented well. Like if multiple constraints are defined, the, the node label need to match with all the constraints to be considered in the skewerness calculations. And they also interact with other plugins. Uh, like each constraint can choose to honor or not honor this plugin like when calculating the, uh, the skewerness. I actually only understand some of the detail when I look into the actual scheduler code. So it's pretty complicated. Uh, so there are more issues like we have a paper. If you're interested, you can check out later. So, so with this observation, we propose our system, Kiwi, which is the first system for verifying the correctness of controllers and their configurations in Kubernetes, and we really focus on these non-trivial interactions. We use the formal, formal verification. In particular, we use model checking. Uh, we, this is a free open source software, and it's a research prototype. We release our uh, get, uh, code on GitHub and our, our paper on archive. Uh, we really appreciate if you can give us any early feedback. We will show this slide at the end of the talk as well. So before we really go into any uh, like more details of, about Kiwi design, let's first take a look at a demo uh, where uh, Kamuk will introduce like a simple like a simple installation of our system and also show you we show you like how we verify for example one where there is a con conflict between you know the co two constraints for scheduler. Okay. Hello, um, I'm Kamuk. I'm going to show a really cool demo for you. So first we're going to um, go into the, our um, repository for the installation. We prepare install.shell script already. So you, all you have to do is just run it. You don't need to worry about dependency or, or whatnot. 
So while it is installed, let's take a look at the input files. You, as a user, are supposed to prepare three different types of um, input files. The first is um, intent.json file. So you, in this file, you specify the property that you want to verify. In this example, it is pod always schedulable. It means um, we want every pod is schedulable at any time. Um, the second input file is cluster config.json file. If you know the node group in Autoscaler, this is similar to that. Um, first node type, we have 24 core for CPU, 63 gigabyte of memory, labels, and minimum and maximum number of node uh, for this node type. There could be multiple different node types. The third uh, input file is um, uh, common uh, deploy.yaml file. This is something that you use for your clusters. This is deployment here. And you see we want five replica for this deployment. If you go down here, we see two different topology spread constraint. Um, you can see this is do not schedule, which is a hard constraint. We cannot violate this constraint when we make um, scheduling decisions. This is something we have to um, satisfy. And you can see there are two. These are the ones who are conflict each other in this example. And you can have other YAML file for other controllers like horizontal part of the scaler. All right. So if you go into our bin directory, the, um, um, so you can see two different options here. One is P option. The other is so in a, um, O option. Uh, P option, you can specify the, the path to the input files. With O option, it's a little special one. Um, we're going to talk about it later in our presentation, but forget about it right now. Um, if you run it, um, this is output of the key V. It's done pretty quickly because this is a simple example. It has two sections. One is counter example here, and the other one is um, summary section. If you take a look at summary section here, um, it says, oh, we found one failure. Um, which is violating intent, part always schedulable, which means there is a part which is not schedulable. schedulable. The, with this count example, you can use it uh, to understand how this failure can happen step by step. This is a sequence of events. Let's take a look at it. First, deployment controller here, create five replicas, successful. Scheduler, place all of them on one of the nodes in a cluster. Sounds good, everything uh, is good for, so far. If you go to the 17 event, um, HP, horizontal part of scaler, say, oh, we need to, uh, we need one more pod, uh, one more replica for this deployment. So I'm going to increase number of, number of replica from five to six. Okay, good. Deployment say, okay, I'm going to create uh, one more new uh, replica for this one. However, here scheduler cannot find any feasible node to place this new pod. So um, it is not satisfying pod always schedulable. And we provide other uh, parameters here. I'm not going to talk about um, all of them here because of the time limitation. One thing here is the simulation mode. We, we offer um, simulation mode. So you can use it without actually running your cluster, actual Kubernetes clusters with your configuration files. Uh, we can uh, show how it can behave in simulation. So you may have the question, like, what is verification? So verification has been widely used in industry, including like cloud storage system, like Amazon, AWS, S3, uh, chip design, cluster networks. So formal verification can provide this high coverage and a formal guarantee of correctness, where exhaustively ex explore a model. So we, in particular, we leverage model checking and we leverage Spain, which is a mature tool that has existed for over 20 years. Uh, we translate system logic into a model, and the spin in place this like, DFS search over all possible system states that are caused by different actions. So, uh, like for example, this shows like a system states, and then like it will explore all you know the actions will take it to another state, and we're gonna just look into all possible actions if there are multiple candidates for each step until we find the violations or until we can prove that everything is good. So why do we need verification? 
This is really because the controllers as we mentioned are pretty dynamic and interact in a non-deterministic way. And also many problems only manifest at certain topologies like we mentioned in example one and two, only in that uh, when the node group is not balanced across different zones and also only after non-deterministic events like CPU changes for example. So comparing with testing and simulation or emulation, these testing and simulations are insufficient to handle such dynamic interactions in any non-deterministic order. And testing simulation do not have this full coverage of all possible scenarios, so they are not really exhaustive. And in particular, testing are mainly deployed for individual controllers rather than the, for the whole systems. To, we can also integrate us into the CICD pipeline by sitting alongside with other testing tools. Uh, like we can be complementary to each other. Like only if KV and testing, like, like exam, everything is good, uh, like you can actually do the deployment. If KV finds something is wrong, like we will return to you a counter example, explain to you like what can actually happen. Like Kamu could just show you. So how could the user use KV? So for end users, you can use it to verify Kubernetes clusters, like you provide us with like deployment scheduling strategies, HPA configurations, and there, for controller developers, you can use our system to understand how your controller interacts with other part of the systems. So let me show you, talk about a little bit more about like KV design. So uh, the, the, the operator may ask a question like, is there any oscillations or is there any, like the, is the man, number of pods in my service always be more or equal to 10? So we will take into those intents and also the configuration of your cluster and our parser will pass them into a uniform format and a verify operator will, will send a profile to model generator which will, it will prove a mo like a related model from a predefined model templates and the model will be returned and then sent to the model checkers that will return the verification result. There may be another circle of this verification where the verifi uh, you know, a counter example will be sent to the users with a sequence of actions where we will re reassure you that your configuration is correct. So what do we really verify? What are the intent that the Kiwi can handle? So through those like failure study, we, 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 we like summarize like four main categories Kiwi will uh, focus. The first is like there should not be any oscillation. That is saying that the cluster shouldn't be changed back and forth in ending circles. Like example two uh, actually valid this intent. And there should not be any unexpected topologies like the pod need, really need to be placed in a certain pattern. Otherwise it can be like vulnerable to any failures. Like example three actually valid this intent. There should be uh, no unexpected object numbers that power need to be fell into certain range, not being too big that will waste your cluster resources or not to be too less that will affect your capacities. So example three also violate this one. There should not be any unexpected object life circles that saying that you know, the power need, need to be stably scheduled, like example one and two actually affect, uh, like violate this intent. So some brief things about passers, so we parse the configuration into some uniform format. Right now we choose JSON, maybe you can, we, can, we can improve it to change it to YAML. And here you can, this part is showing like what are the power templates, this shows no tab, similar as will come show you. And those show including like controller configurations intents. And now we only implemented some preliminary passers for YAML file, but like you can, you can implement other passers for Helm charts, like uh, pull requests will be welcome, as long as like it can be parsing to a uniform format, our system can handle it. So next I'm gonna talk about one of the important part, which is how we do modeling. There are three main things in the modeling, the workload resources, the controllers, and the events. In particular, we use Primela language provided by Sting, which is a C-style language, and it's, it's very easy to understand. Uh, this, uh, like, basically we model it, like, uh, each object into an array of attributes, and we model the controller into this event-driven loop, and we model event similarly as controller as into this proxy tab, whereby the Sting is gonna exhaustively search for all the inter possible interleavings between the proxy tab. Uh, this shows a code example of, uh, of node and the scheduler. Here you can see that the node has a defined different attributes and the way defined node as array. And then for scheduler, there is an array and also the scheduler is, uh, the main logic is put into this atomic block and will do a for loop over this queue. 
So we have implemented six mostly commonly used controller and their features. For each controller, we manually examine the Kubernetes source code and capture the most essential details. We omit any implementation details like error handling, retries, or API calls, and also other kind of fancy data structure, we will also optimize them, and we only keep the most essential details with the simplest possible logic. And this table shows the, what we implemented, like the controllers, and also what are the line of code for each controller. And from here, you can see comparing with the actual implementations, which contains maybe tens of thousands of lines of code, we're really much simpler, although we didn't finish all of them, but we're still much simpler than the actual implementation. This also suggests that the Kiwi can be used as a reference model for Kubernetes for advanced users who want to learn more about how the controller really works, they can read our code for more details. If you want to support more controller, the modeling language Pramila is easy to understand, like you can implement your own controllers and put it into the pool of model templates. We hope the major logic is one-time effort that can benefit the, the whole communities. Uh, pull requests are welcome for that. Uh, so finally, I'm going to talk with you about the verifier operator, which addressed the very important scalability challenge for Kubernetes. Uh, where the cluster, it can reach to hundreds, thousands of nodes and many thousands of pods or, or even more. This kind of brings like known state exploration problem for, uh, to, to verification. And also, uh, the auto-scaling and elasticity is one of the key characteristics of Kubernetes. That is saying that users are interested in not only one, but like a wide range of different topologies. Topology here including like how many nodes and how many pods in different node groups. So with this scalability challenge, we propose a hypothesis that is, if a cluster can violate an intent, then very likely they can do so at a relatively small scale. By the way, this hypothesis we believe can also be used in other kind of system like testing. You may probably test in a smaller scale, for example. This is really because uh, you know, the, we believe the main complexity mainly lies in the cluster controller logic and the configuration that does not really grow up with the scale. And also, all the topologies are generated from one cluster configuration. So a subset of the topologies are often representative enough for the whole class of the topologies. Other people also made a similar observation in other type of system. So with this observation, we propose our algorithm, incremental scaling algorithm. By the way, it's nothing related to HPA. It's really our internal uh, algorithm for dealing with scalabilities. So we start to verify cluster at the smallest possible scale, and we increase the scale until we find the violations or we reach to a confidence size where the confidence size is saying that with, with high confidence, we, will, we should have already found the violations. We did some empirical study to show that small scale is actually enough by examining a collection of real world example. Like we already talked about like three of them with you at the beginning. So in particular for each case, we look in, we use our system to, to, to find like what are the minimum possible violation scale that we find the violations. So from this a column, like you can see that the max main violation scale is actually three node and six pod. And we also compare our small, the minimum violation skill with the reported skill. And in six of seven cases, we actually found like we have like an even smaller skill than the reported skill. And we uh, like, we confirm our findings by reproducing the smaller skills in real Kubernetes clusters. So to determine the confidence size, we can choose it empirically by setting up to two X of the like mini max main violation skill. Here, uh, in particular, in this case, it will be set into six node. And uh, you know, this confidence size is not one dimension. Like you may have multiple node type and pods. So to understand how different combination of sizes affect the verification result, we swap into a range of combination of node and pod and see how the verification result look like. So each dot here representing whether we found the violation on that particular skill or if we find no violations, or if it reached to a non-interesting trivial cases, which is defined showing here. As from, and you can see that the skill is like increasing here. And the, from the yellow area, we can see that the violation, we affirm that the violation consistently appear for a sufficient large number of N and P. And also the exact combination of different N and P really matters. So this is just in summarize, like our title summarize our, our, our conclusion that we really need to, need to check with all combination of sizes for different type up to the confidence size in our system to have high confidence.
In summary, like we choose confidence size empirically from the past failures, and we start from the smallest possible skills, and we check for all combination of sizes until we find the violations or we reach to a confidence size. So if there's no violation found, we will conclude that there is no violation with high confidence. We also did some other model optimization for scalability, but due to time limit, I will just save these slides here for you to check it offline. So next, the comic is gonna show you a demo with like this incremental scaling algorithm, and uh, like it's gonna show about the example two where there is a confliction between scheduler and uh, the scheduler. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to show the second demo. Um, for the second demo, we're going to run um, this um, run command. So previously, we used P option. Uh, we here, instead of P, we are using C option. Uh, we provide a um, example, which is predefined in our repo, so you can just use it without preparing your input files to understand how Kiwi works. And in this time, we're not going to use O option. We used O option, but in this time, we're not going to use O option. It means we want to activate um, Kiwi's incremental scaling algorithm. So if you run it, you see um, it starts from the smallest scale. So he, you see here, um, number of nodes for node type zero is zero. Uh, node type one has only one node, and deployment type zero has only one instance. And you can see the number is um, increasing gradually. If you go down here, you see different topology is explored uh, at, at whatever time. So here, one, zero, zero, two, and so on. And it will take roughly 50 to 60 seconds for this exam uh, experiment. Uh, this is just because we are um, exploring uh, all the possible different topologies in a more comprehensible way. And for information, again, we are not running any actual clus um, clusters here. And you see two intents we want to verify here. One is no oscillation eviction. The other one is pot always schedulable. Um, and you see uh, this is the output of this um, experiment. It's a little more complicated than the previous one. You see the failure was found. Uh, let's see what happens here with the counterexample. Um, deployment controller again creates six replicas here, fine. Scheduler schedule all of them on one of the node in a clusters, one, two, three, and so on, fine. Perfect, however, this scheduler kicks in and say, hey, you are violating the poly spread constraint. So I'm going to evict part one on node one. Okay, however, deployment controller want to maintain a six number replica. So now we have five, so we create one more, uh, another one to keep six. Scheduler schedule it one of the node. And this scheduler kicks in again and say, you're violating this constraint again, so I'm going to evict this part, the same one. And it will happen again and again and again. Here you see scheduler, this scheduler, deployment controller create, scheduler, and this scheduler. So if you go down here, a summary, you can find um, uh, there's uh, one failure, which is violating no oscillation eviction, which is there's oscillation. Okay, uh, so this is a backup. Uh, so just summarize here, uh, like for evaluation result, we already show you like, uh, we use like real failure cases to demonstrate our hypothesis. And uh, we can actually perform for large deployment, which maybe contains hundreds of nodes, like finish them within 100 seconds. And uh, we can closely model the real system by we compare with the real Kubernetes cluster running logs and we find the matching rate across the events is close to 100%. And we actually found two new issues in a Kubernetes controller, in particular the descheduler we reported on the GitHub and the one of them has been confirmed, the other is waiting for response. So, with this, I want to take a moment to thank everyone who have helped with our proposal and giving us feedback to our project and presentation. And, uh, uh, and with this, like, we will be really welcome if you have any like, early feedback. We'll be really appreciate that. Uh, you can please chat with us or like, you know, take our survey, which contains about like, six different questions. We hope to make it easier for you. And we're really seeking, we are really seeking for this early user to use our tool. It's for free. And uh, like, you can provide us your configurations or you can chat with us. You know, we can work with you to help with improving your cluster reliabilities. So with that, uh, I'm happy to take your question. Yeah, thanks everyone for coming, by the way, yeah.
Hi, it was a great talk. Um, I was just curious, is, is this coupled in any way to the Kubernetes version of these controllers, or how do you manage that? Oh, I see. Good, good points. Like, yeah, right now we, we only implement the model for one particular version. But like, at we so first of all, we, we believe like you know the major logic for those controllers is one time effort, hopefully. And there any any update patches will make a smaller change, or we could make no change to the model because we only capture the most high level detail. But we're saying that we definitely recognize there is a maintenance effort for different version, so that's why we are here, like we want to, you know, hope everyone, more people can join, like, you know, a few people's effort can actually benefit the whole community, you know, as a one-time effort in general. So, yeah, and also, like, in the future, we're also looking forward to do some more research on, like, you know, just verify for the controller as a black box. So, yeah, you, you won't need to, you know, worry about version. That'll be the final <laughs> goal, if possible, yeah. Yeah, hope I answer your question, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? So if we wanted oh. to test this against like uh, one of our own controllers, how would we point it to like our source code for the controller or something like that? Oh, sorry, can you say it again? It's a if we wanted to test uh, like the, your um, tool against one of, uh, one of our own controllers, how would mm -hmm. we point it at like our own source code? Uh, is there a question like saying if we want to add more controllers to the tools or? Uh, yeah, so like if we wrote our own controller. And, I see. And we want to validate Got our it. controller with your tool. I see. Makes sense. If you want to validate that, you probably need to use like the Prometa language to implement your controller and, uh, you know, you can insert it into our templates uh, model and uh, then you can use the whole system. But still need to first implement your own controllers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Using the provided language. Yeah. Super interesting. Uh, quick question. It's like you're already showing the failures and that cluster is not configured correctly. Do you plan to provide some recommendations? What exactly could be optimized or what, what we can do as an operator for the cluster to reduce these failures? Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't quite get you. are saying uh, a You're showing in a demo that uh. it's failed, but it's very hard to understand for cluster operators, I okay. mean, people managing the clusters, what okay. exactly needs to be done Oh, I see. I see. Got it. So, yeah, I see. So, this is actually not part of the goal of this project to, you know, how, tell you how to fix it. It's more like sometimes it's actually hard to already to reason about what really happened. So, this is more like preventively tell you what can happen before you do deployment, and hopefully the operator can can know maybe this is really a problem with particular configuration. They can fix it. Yeah, we we are now really like propose a really solution for you. That would be a whole another project. Yeah, but yeah, good question. That would be a very good goal in the future, for sure, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, great talk, no question, just uh, good luck on your defense next <laughs> week. <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Okay, all right.